All right, on tonight's episode, we're back inside our artificial intelligence course, and we're still doing our neural networks module. Let's have a look at what we went over tonight. Now, tonight, I did let you know that we're going to be running some code tonight, or we were supposed to be running some code tonight, but of course, we ran into some hiccups. So let's uh, actually have a look at what we're going to, we went over tonight. So this is the code that we wrote right here. This was supposed to be a handwriting recognition program that we wrote. So uh, first, we had to import our... Our imports, those are our imports there. Then we use the MNIST for the handwriting database. Now, if you didn't know, which you probably didn't, that uh, one of the most popular data sets in machine learning is the MNIST data set, which is a data set of a whole bunch of examples of people's handwriting digits. And what we can do is immediately access that data set, which is built into the library. The data set is found inside of the TensorFlow library. So yeah, that's a very useful uh, data set that we have access to inside of the TensorFlow. And then we started to uh, prepare our data for training. So we were doing things like taking all of the values and dividing them by 255. Remember that color values tend to range from zero to 255. So we can divide them into 255s just to put them into a range of zero to one to make it a little easier to train on. Let me get rid of this. So that's that, that's all of this part here. And then we had to uh, create a convolutional neural network. So this is just going to be the next few steps. You have to do model equals tf.rest.modules.sequential. Then we add our first convolutional layer, which is this one here. So you have 32 filters all by the size of 3 by 3 activation of ReLU. And the import shape equals 28 by 28 by 1. The one here is the channels. You remember the channels are all, uh, RGB, the three channels. So this one here represents is either going to be a black or white. So we're not going to have color within the written uh, digits. So it's going to be a 28 by 28 by 1. And then we have the max pooling layer here, which is going to be a size of 2 by 2. If you remember, we went over the max pooling, how we uh, used our 2 by 2 or whatever size filter we have. We're going over our feature map and we're going to use the... Uh, highest digit or the highest value inside of that pool. So it'll be the highest value inside of our two by two filter here. Then we flatten everything out so we can have one long input of neurons. And then we added a hidden layer with the dropout. So this is our hidden layer here, a dense with a 128 neurons activation of ReLU. The dropout is 0.5. So we're telling this layer here that we want to drop half of the, uh, drop half of the layer so we're not training on the whole 128 at one time and maybe be becoming biased or becoming too reliant on uh, things that we have access to. So we drop half, 0.5 specifies that, and then we train, and then we keep doing that process over and over. And then we add an output layer with an output units for all 10 digits. It's supposed to be output here. And you can see that here with the uh, tf.caress layers.dense 10 activation equals softmax. I did get the definition of softmax, but I'm not going to go into it right now because I still have a lot more notes to take. I mean, the, the code is done, but I am going to go back and fill in the gaps here with the uh, extra note taken so you can see exactly what's going on in depth. Like I said, this is just a quick glimpse of everything we're doing. And then we have a train our neural network here. We're going to model.compile, optimizer equals atom, loss equals categorical cross entropy, metrics equals accuracy. And then lastly, we had, well, not lastly, but then we had the model fit. This we train our model. We have the model fit X train Y train epic equals ten. Means we're going to train ten times. Then we have the evaluate. We're going to evaluate our model to see how well it's performing. The X test Y test for burst equals two. And then lastly, we had this uh, save model to file here. It's something new that we have done. Let me actually uh, uncomment this out because I actually thought it, this was the issue why it wasn't actually running the program because we had this new piece of data here, but it wasn't this, this wasn't the issue. So I'll go ahead and run this slide for you guys so we can see exactly what the issue is. You can see down here with the uh, issues. I didn't feel like troubleshooting. I've been programming all day. And uh, yeah, I don't feel like troubleshooting the issue just right now. So I will pick it up tomorrow, but I can run it for you guys so you can see exactly what's happening in real time. This isn't like the other module where it's gonna take hours to compile. So as soon as everything gets geared up, I can get and run it for you. We can uh, see what's going on. All right, 
Secondly, I tried to run it without the second argument, but don't don't forget that we need the second argument because the part of our code that we ran from a previous from a previous program. This one here, when we filter the image, we still need that second argument, so it's not gonna work without it's not gonna work all the way through without that second argument. So that's why I still have that there. Even with the second argument, we made it to the uh to the handwriting program, but we still ran into an error there. But just to let you know everything is still working that came beforehand. So yeah, that's why I had to add this uh second argument here. So just to refresh your memory, we're going to go through the bank notes. We're going to specify if the bank notes are either counterfeit or authentic. Then we're going to run our image filter, and then we're going to come down here to our handwritten digits uh, recognition program. So in that order, because that's the order we uh, wrote the programs in. Or that's the order we wrote the code in. So here, our 33 epics of the bank notes. We're going to get and get that out the way. Next comes our filtered image. And now this is the part where our hand our handwriting recognition is supposed to was well, actually downloading now. Okay, so it's actually going through. So it didn't go through earlier. Okay, it didn't go it didn't download all the way through. So we were downloading data from this data set here, and it looks like we got all of our downloads, but we still ran into an error here. We have no attribute to and it looks like it's because I spelled something wrong. It looks like it spelled exactly the same to me. Okay, I got cater gorical. Cater gorical is supposed to be categorical. No, I do got categorical. Where are they seeing categorical at? C C A T E G O R I C A L. I got it spelled the right way. It's saying maybe it's another location. Let me see if I can find it somewhere else. I'm moving the wrong one. Hold on. I believe that's the only location where we have the categorical cross entropy mentioned. Yeah, we wouldn't be all the way up there with it because the code wasn't that long. Let me see. Oh, here it is here. That's why. Okay. All right. So we're doing this live. So, yeah, maybe the... Uh, and I wasn't on Wi-Fi when I tried to run it initially. So now that I'm on Wi-Fi and I actually have my words spelled correctly, let's see if we can actually run it again and uh, get that code to work. I think that's the only location where I had the categor categorical mention. Let me see. Yeah, that's the only other location. So we do have it uh, correctly spelled here. That's why it was throwing me off. But now that we have everything up and running, let's uh, run through it now. And let's see. Maybe I can save myself from the morning of uh, troubleshooting and debugging. Maybe it was just the fact that I couldn't download what I needed to download, which is probably the case. I couldn't download it from this uh, URL here because I didn't have access to the Internet when I was trying to initially run it. Usually when I compile, I'm not online because I can usually compile my uh, codes and they compile right away without the internet access. But since we are downloading from a live URL, maybe I needed to be on, maybe I needed to be on the internet to actually access that URL. So yeah, makes perfect sense. So yeah, we're going through our epics again. Hopefully this video isn't too long. There is a 10 minute max. I don't know how long I've been on so far. I would hate to have to do all of this over, but I'd rather the code be working and do it over than the code not be working in. Yeah, so let's see. So we're going through our bank notes again. There's that. Now we're going to do our image again. Come on, come on, come on. 
Here's our image. And now let's see if our code continues to compile correctly. We're going to start downloading from that URL and see if we can go all the way through now that we have categorical spelled correctly. I'm hearing all kinds of bells and whistles already. Let's see if that's an indication of something. Are you going to pull through? Can you do it? All right, it looks like it's going. Have our first epic. Like I said, we did specify that we are running 10 epics. So it looks like it is gearing up to run. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's actually compiling. Nice. And it looks like it's going to be three minutes per epic. Well, that's not going to be nice because we have 10 epics. That'll be 30 minutes. Simple math. But yeah. All right, at least it is compiling. I'm not going to stick around and watch it compile all the way. What I'll, what I'll do is I'll let it compile because if we have about, oh, I forgot what he said it was, about 60,000 handwriting examples that we have to work through. So, yeah, that's probably why it's taking so long. See, I'm going to let it compile, and then uh, I will document what we have and uh, copy and paste it to the actual notes here. And then what I'll do is I'll let it compile all the way through, and then I'll show you what it looks like in the terminal also tomorrow. But yeah, so everything is working the way it's supposed to be working. I thought we had a hiccup, but it's a good thing that we didn't. It was just an issue of spelling errors and uh, no internet connection. Yep, so I'll let that compile and do what it does. And I will keep you guys posted every step of the way. But for now, this is the Python Poppy. You guys stay Gucci.